Hey everybody, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini, and welcome to episode number 124 of Whip Wednesday. This is my weekly live show here. We go live on Facebook and on YouTube every Wednesday at the same time. Remember that the time has changed for me. So instead of 4 p.m. Eastern time, now we same four o'clock for me, which we're now on Eastern Daylight Savings Time. So if you're in a different time zone where my change now affects you, make sure that you jot that down or change the time in your calendar or whatever reminder system you use so you can make sure to catch us live and not miss us on Wednesdays at four o'clock p.m. All right, so let's make sure everybody can see me and hear me. I'm popping into the chat here. Let's see who we have. <laughs> Hi, Della. She says, tuning in from Southern California. She says, did I read roaches correctly? You did. We'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, Hi, Glenda from Boston. We got Betty in the house from Texas. Hi, Betty. I'm coming to y'all from my home crafting studio, and we live in North Central Florida, where it is overcast today, but the temperatures have been nice, nice, nice. Warming up a little. It cooled down yesterday and today, but they're going to be back up in the 70s tomorrow. All right, let's see. Hi, Janice. Great. Thanks for tuning in. Hi, Deborah. And who else do I have? JC's on and Nancy from Florida as well. Hi, Connie from Tampa. And Margie's tuning in from Wisconsin. Hey, everybody. So uh, let's start off. I have a little list here because I have quite a few little things to chat about and to show you as well as a demo. So I'm going to save the demo for the end since that will take the longest. But I wanted to uh, catch y'all up on the clapper fiasco. If you caught Whip, Wep Whip, Whip episode, I was about to say, <laughs> Whip Wednesday episode 123, so last week's episode, I was telling y'all and showing you all the little things that I bought at QuiltCon, which was a few weeks before that in Raleigh, North Carolina. For those that don't know, QuiltCon is the largest modern quilting show. It's like a convention event. There's vendors, there's hundreds of quilts on display and all that. And so we attended that, my friends and I, um, in Raleigh, North Carolina last month. Okay, well, I was talking about uh, how I don't check bags and I had purchased the clapper from Modern American Vintage. My friend Chris, check his stuff out, amazing. Um, handmade, I mean, they're just gorgeous. They have like different wooden inlays in them and they're tailor or wooden tailors clappers. If you've been watching my videos for any amount of time, if I have an iron out, you probably have seen me take out a big chunk of wood as a clapper. Well, his work is amazing and I got one there and TSA pulled it from my uh, from my carry-on luggage and they did not let me pass it through because they considered it a bat. Well, here's the update. Shout out to Chris from Modern American Vintage. He sent me another one to replace the one that TSA snatched. This is, um, it's almost identical to the one I had. It had the same pattern. Look at that. This is all wood, y'all. It's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Check out his stuff. And I like it because last year I had purchased one from him at QuiltCon 2023. And it was this one. Y'all have probably seen me use this one throughout the past year in my uh, tutorials and video courses. And so you can see that they're not all the same. So my new one, thank you, Chris, for sending me this one. <laughs> Shame on you, TSA. Somebody, hopefully somebody got my clapper and is going to be able to use it. But this one is about a quarter of an inch narrower than the one that I already have and a little bit longer, as you can tell. I love long, narrow ones. And this one, I had uh, the one that I had got from him at the show was similar. I think it was a little bit shorter, but it was similar. And I wanted it because it's narrower and longer. And so I thought this would be even better to cover a longer hem when I'm making garments, right? Because if you're not familiar with how to use Taylor's clappers, it's basically when we iron, we set this on top. So we press our hems, any types of creases. If we want really nice flat seams or we're pressing our seam allowance open or to the side, having a wooden Taylor's clapper just helps make everything kind of flatten out and just gives your overall project, whether it's a quilting project or a garment, it just, uh, I don't know, it gives it this like professional finish that is just, you just look at it like, <sighs> Now I can move on to the next step in the construction process, but it really does help. And it is a game changer. If you've never used one, definitely get your hands on one. Um, we sell more basic ones in our online shop, but these are just gorgeous. I mean, they're literally works of art. So yes. Yay. Shout out to Chris for sending me one to replace the one that TSA snatched from me, but I'm excited to use this one, um, going forward in some of my other projects and for hems, like I said, cause it's longer. Uh, let's see. Tamara says, yes, I saw those at QuiltCon in Raleigh. All of his items were beautiful. They were. And those of you that maybe missed out last week's episode, I had shown y'all some of the other tools that I got from him. 
like a seam pressing tool and then he sells this three pack and all this stuff is on his website. I put the link in the video description box below. We can put it in the Facebook description as well. This is like a three pack set that comes with the seam ripper, the hair marker, and then a point turning tool and they are just uh, impeccable, impeccable. Great feel, just gorgeous works of functional art, if I do say so myself. Oh, awesome, Maria says I just ordered a clapper from him, yes. Oh, uh, Windless Original says it looks thinner. Let me see. It's the same, I mean, maybe 1 16th of an inch thinner, but they're the same thickness. Yeah, maybe like a 16th of an inch, a little bit thinner, but they're about the same thickness. Yeah, so I'm super excited about this. It has a great weight to it too, which is important to weigh down when you're pressing out those seams and stuff, so that's great. All right, Kate says, what did they think it was? Well, the guy said that he couldn't let me pass it through because they considered it a bat because it had that weight to it. Anyway, all right, let's see. Right, I know, Jamie says, I'm surprised they were okay with the tools but not the clapper. Seriously, I was saying like, I could do a lot more damage with a seam ripper than I can <laughs> with that. Um, but all right, let's go ahead and give everybody my over the shoulder camera shot. What trigger warning, trigger warning. If you don't like roaches or you're gonna freak out, you might wanna close the video. But here are my roaches. <laughs> I don't know why I get such a kick out of these guys. These are thread roaches, okay? I embroidered these guys. They're not real, but man, do they, don't they look real? Like, do, 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 do. <laughs> They're so gross, they make me laugh. So I, um, <laughs> my friend Rhonda, who owns a Stitch in Time Embroidery Designs, has a son named Jonathan, just like my son, who also digitizes embroidery designs. And he's really into critters, spiders and roaches and all kinds of stuff. And so he digitizes for them, like under their machine embroidery designs, um, <laughs> I just can't stop laughing. Um, they're different little critters. And when I tell you they are so like anatomically correct and real looking, he is a digitizing genius. So shout out to Jonathan. Rhonda is um, his mom, the owner of the business. And she told me about his designs. And when I saw it, I was like, oh, I need this design. So I logged into their website, A Stitch in Time Designs. As y'all can see on the screen there, he has three <laughs> roach designs. But his uh, tarantula freestanding lace design went viral last year. Of course, I purchased that design too. And I plan to use these guys on my Halloween decor, okay? <laughs> Let me tell you how real these look. I know they're fake. I stitched them out myself on an embroidery machine. I soaked the water soluble stabilizer off. I put them together myself. And still when I have them on the table, every time I walk in here, I'm like, ah. <laughs> every time it's like, I still cannot not jump when I see them. So Lisa has something funny. She's typing in the chat here and she says, put on the back of a shirt and walk in public. So as you can see on the screen, I said they have three different cockroach <laughs> designs. One is freestanding lace. Okay, so let's put them back so they can see the one that I'm holding here, Brandon. The one that's on the white background on that website there is the one that you stitch on fabric, okay? The one that I'm holding here is freestanding lace, meaning the embroidery machine, and I have a little video. I posted the video on my Facebook page as a reel, so you could see the process from beginning to end, and then I posted it as, uh, on my Instagram account as well. So you can find me on both of those platforms under Crafty Gemini. And you basically chain, they tell you, you know, and, and this is one thing, let me give a shout out to Rhonda, because this is the first uh, machine embroidery website that I have purchased designs from that has the most amazing in-depth PDF instructions, y'all. You download the design, and if you're new to embroidery, no worries, because you can download her PDF, and she has p uh, color images that show you every step of the way, how to select your color thread uh, so that you can stitch out the different parts of it. And you stitch through, let me grab it, um, wash away, my, I used Wash Away Wonder, uh, wa listen to me, Wash Away Wonder tape, Wash Away Plus, which is my water-soluble stabilizer, and I'm not sure if we have some in the shop, but y'all you, you, can check it out at craftygemini.com. I have uh, my own line of like a tear-away, a cut-away, and a wash-away stabilizer. So I did two layers of this, of my Wash Away uh, stabilizer, and you just stitch on this. Well, this stuff dissolves. If you've ever watched any of my freestanding lace video tutorials in the past, then you probably have seen this before, or if you know, you're know you well-versed in machine embroidery, for sure you know what this is. So you stitch on here, okay? 
and it's made in two parts. So if I flip the little roach underneath, you can see this light tan is a separate chunk, okay? And so I stitch both the portions out. You dissolve this stuff in water, and when you pat these out and lay them out to dry with a little towel, they dry like that flat, and it's just thread left over. So it's amazing the way that that works with freestanding lace. <laughs> Bernadine says, shaking my head. Leave it to you, Vanessa Ella. It's just, they're so fun. And so, oh, I don't think I have any over there, but I was going to say something else. So I stitched these out as freestanding lace. Okay, so it's like its own little three-dimensional thing, and you can even move the legs. Super cute. The two pieces come together with a little dab of hot glue. So I use the hot glue gun and put the body piece with the top together. And then, I mean, I was like, I can see some great pranks in my future, but as you saw on the Stitch in Time Designs website, they also have one that's not freestanding lace. It's just a stitch out embroidery uh, design that you put on clothes. And I will do that. You better believe it that I'm gonna stitch that out on some garments and just like walk around for so people can like try to go like this to me and I'll be like, oh no, nah, this, this is an original design. <laughs> I think this would be so funny. But anyways, I was laughing because one lady, when I posted the video, said, uh, aren't there enough of those in Central Florida already? <laughs> this is roach heaven over here. You know, we live in the swamp, y'all. So, but I mean, they're gross. It's not that I like roaches, but they're just so funny to me because they look so realistic. So if any of you have this weird sense of humor like me and like to prank people, or I can totally see these for my Halloween decor. I'm going to position, I'm going to stitch out a bunch more and position them like around the food trays or like my cheese board. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so fun. So I'll stitch out more like this. You can do different colors. I love it. And, uh, for those of you that have an embroidery machine that maybe only has the smallest four by four hoop, you can stitch these out. I stitched them out on a five by seven hoop because uh, when you purchase the file from Rhonda at uh, Stitch in Time Designs, there is a file that stitches out just one roach and then there's a file that stitches out three. So because I have a larger embroidery machine and I could uh, use my five by seven hoop, I just stitched out three at once. But for those of you with smaller machines, you could just stitch you know, one out on a four by four. Just giving y'all some ideas. Maybe you have some kids that you're teaching or um, some guys in your life who kind of like this stuff and you're trying to get them to use the machines. This would be super fun. Halloween costumes. You know, you can get really creative. And these things, I think they're just such a great conversation starter if people don't run off on you. All right. Um, let's see. Oh, yes. Demp's Design says, yes, roaches are rampant around these parts. <laughs> North Central Florida. You know it. Dawn says, I have a great nephew who loves them. Yeah, when my daughter was little, she used to, like, go outside, collect roaches, and she'd ask me if she could keep them as a pet. That's a hard no for me, ma'am. Please toss those out. Um, Sylvia says, you have some gross ideas that are fun. <laughs> when I saw this, I was like, I have to. This is just too cute. So I'll keep y'all posted when I stitch some out on some clothes, maybe like on a hoodie or something on the back of a sleeve. That would be crazy. All right. So anyway, those are my roaches. Now for a, a cuter machine embroidery design uh, and the links for where you can get these... <laughs> They just feel so weird. Um, where you can find those is in the description box below. So I have a link there so you all can check out um, Rhonda and Jonathan's designs at A Stitch in Time. Here's a cute one for you, and it's a freebie for me. I have a an in-the-hoop bunny bookmark tutorial since we're talking a little bit about machine embroidery. I wanted just to share this with y'all. I posted this video, I don't know how many years ago, but when I had my studio and I taught a lot of kids and kids' summer camp classes, this was always a hit with the kids. Uh, do you have a picture of those that you can show on there? Just so y'all can get some ideas, because you can play around with the different vinyl. I did design... Say what? Oh, it's the same one? No, that's okay. You can leave it then. Yeah, you can see the little design there. But you can play around with the different colors of thread that you use for the stitching, for the eyes, the nose, the tongue that's sticking out on the little bunny. And then I use green here, and I use um, some sharp snips to cut out the little bit of green at the top to make it look like he's popping out from under the grass. So if you have kids or you're putting together little Easter baskets and things, check this out. We'll put the link in the description box below for you. This is a free download, and this uh, works on a 4 by 4 hoop. So the most basic embroidery machine, you can download my file and I give you the file formats for most all of the typical ones. So whether you have a baby lock embroidery machine or a brother one or an Elna, I have all the files there for you to get and that way you can stitch it out. Now, just keep in mind that the design is um, designed to be stitched out on a fabric that doesn't fray. So if you're gonna give these a try, uh, you could do it on felt or like faux leather or vinyl or something like that. 
Okay. <laughs> Zena, you and everybody else. She says the bunny is more to my liking. I know that's, you know, I had to keep a balance for today's show y'all. But anyway, a cute little bunny. These are my bunny bookmarks and I have a free little uh, opt-in page. There's a link that you can click in and we'll email you uh, the file because it's a zip folder that you have to uh, open up so that you can get all the different file formats. Okay. So if anybody's interested in that, check out my bunny bookmark. This is a freebie. Oh, and it comes with a, a link to a free step-by-step -step tutorial. So if you're new to embroidery and you kind of want to try in the hoop projects, maybe you have some vinyl or felt, this would be a great project because I walk you through step by step in the tutorial to go along with it. And like I said, it is free. Okay. Uh, let's see, make sure I'm not missing anything out here. Marina says, y'all know if you have one palmetto bug, you definitely have three or more for sure. Well, <laughs> if you have an oak tree, you might want to stay indoors. Um, they love to just scurry out from underneath all those leaves <laughs> when it rains. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay. So we talked about the clapper, the roaches, the bunny. Next thing is up. And if you got my email today about this show, I wanted to let y'all know, I was like this year, I've been trying to do a lot more crafts and more stuff that is not just sewing and quilting. So I have a lot of hobbies, y'all. I have so many gadgets. I have so many tools. And so I'm just going to be taking y'all along for the ride. And if you're interested, then you can just keep watching because I'm going to be doing videos on all kinds of stuff and just sharing reviews, my experience and things that I'm doing. So I've been playing with sublimation. If you caught my video last year, um, I wanted to go into sublimation in the cheapest way possible. And so I converted an Epson, I'm looking at it from here, an Epson Workforce printer. I think it's a 2930 uh, Workforce uh, printer. It's an inkjet printer, but I converted it, watching several YouTube tutorials, into a sublimation printer. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this because some people um, have been asking me, like they think that they can just print out an image and put it on, and if they heat set it on, it will just stay on. So for sublimation, you have to have a sublimation printer with sublimation ink that prints on sublimation paper, okay? And then you have to apply that with heat and pressure to something that is finished for sublimation. So some type of a poly finish, right, to stick on. So these mugs are from HTV Rant, and this was just a six pack that I got of 11 ounce mugs. And so I printed out a design on sublimation paper in my DIY hacked bootlegged inkjet printer that I converted to a sublimation printer. So that means it has sublimation inks that I had bought. And I did a video, I think last year, uh, a little real video on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok even to show y'all like what I did and where I got the inks from and things like that. So I was actually a little bit scared that it wasn't going to work because I hadn't printed anything out in months. And everybody on the internet was telling me, make sure you print something out at least twice a week because if you don't, the ink is gonna get clogged and it ain't gonna work and blah, blah, blah. So I crossed my fingers and it printed just fine. So we put it on the mug and I have a video that I posted already on Facebook and on Instagram for this. And then let me show y'all if you've been watching my videos, you probably recognize the color and the brand. So the other, remember the heat press that I had that has like a drawer that we were talking about fusing fabrics and interfacing to? It's by HTV Rant. Well, the links for both the set of mugs and this sublimation tumbler, this auto, uh, auto tumbler heat press is basically what it is. You can sublimate mugs, cups, glass cans, tumblers. It has a set uh, range of like what the diameter it can't be more than a certain diameter, obviously, to fit in here. But when I turn it on, this closes. So it gives the perfect amount of pressure. And then you set the temperature and the time based on the project. And this obviously has a handle at the top. So this was wrapped with the sublimation paper and the heat safe tape. And this just closed on it. And then it sublimated it. And when I peeled it all off, I ended up with a super cute mug, nice, bright, vibrant colors. And... Um, I'm super happy to say that my printer works. <laughs> you know, my little DIY hack of an inkjet printer to sublimation printer works fine. This is probably like, I don't know, maybe the 40th project sublimation wise that I have printed out on it and the colors look good. I mean, it, it, it works. So I'm going to keep working with it until, um, until it doesn't work anymore. And then I really, I need a real <laughs> sublimation printer, but this heat press, and I will say I have another tumbler press. It's a nightmare. I've gotten some good tumblers out of it, 
but it's really tricky to manually control the amount of pressure applied. And on this one, because it's automatic, I don't have any issues. And you can see it's not that big. It's kind of lightweight, you know, and it's just way easier to move around than the other one. So if y'all are interested in seeing how that actually works and have me do a video here on Whip Wednesday or just a separate standalone video on my YouTube channel, let me know because that's definitely something that I can do. Just to bring y'all, I mean, some of you are like sublimation experts and you're probably like, it's about time, girl. Sublimation is old already. But I just like to dabble in all the things. I always like to have some good gift ideas on hand, things that are, you know, quick, easy, and that I can customize it to whoever I'm giving it to without having to spend days making something, like quilting or whatever. Lynette says, I need that mug. Isn't it cute? Coffee cat. <laughs> But the colors came out really good. I have no ghosting. It just, everything turned out really, really nicely and I was really happy with it. So if you are someone who's into sublimation and you want to do this stuff and you already have the setup of the sublimation printer with the different blanks and things, check it out because I put my affiliate link to that auto tumbler press in the description box below. Okay. All right. So... Um, so Jamie's asking, can you only do mugs in that press or can you do long thin cups too? You can do those 20 ounce tumblers. It has like a whole list. My friend Michelle at Michelle's party plan it. You can check her out on Facebook, on Instagram and on YouTube. She did a video on this same, um, tumbler press and she goes through and like sets up a bunch of different cups and mugs and she tests them to tell you like, okay, this one fit, this one won't fit, this one fit, you know, like that. So that would be a great resource. And her channel name and her account name is Michelle's party plan hyphen it like plan it but plan it she's like a party planner oh my gosh her ideas are ridiculously amazing super creative and everything turns out great so if you're into sublimation or cricket crafts check out michelle's party planet uh, diane says you and your toys i can't keep up i know me neither i should have built a bigger house <laughs> i don't have room in here for all this but let me show y'all something else i'm gonna take this earring off so that i can show you i got a laser I got a laser, a laser engraver and cutter, y'all. So I've been working on, <laughs> look at these cute earrings. I wanted to make some that were kind of quilty, that reminded me of like quilt blocks and things like that. So I made some for my two friends, Laura and Laura, who went with me to QuiltCon this year and we all had matching earrings. They turned out so cute. I made these. Three millimeter basswood <laughs> in my laser machine. Y'all not gonna be able to keep up with these machines and these gadgets because literally I cannot either. But they're so cute, they're so lightweight, and then I just turned them into earrings. So I'm gonna be doing some videos on this stuff if y'all are interested um, to do just a review on what machine I got, how it works, and all that. So if you like to see that kind of stuff, leave me a comment below and let me know because we always go through and check the comments, and that way I know, you know, what exactly y'all want to see next, what you want me to share with you, and um, it keeps me from being like, ah, oh, they don't care about that. If you tell me you wanna see it, then yes, I would uh, make videos for y'all, okay? Okay, um, Windless Original says, I'm surprised you didn't already have one. I know. Well, sometimes these companies reach out to send me stuff and I'm like, I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't have room for it. I don't need it. And then I'll see one of my friends do a video on it and then I'm like, actually, <laughs> now I want it. Let me reach out to them again. <laughs> okay, so next on my list, let's move on now. We're finally to the demo. Okay, good. That didn't take me too long to just run my mouth about all the other random crafts I'm doing. Now let's talk about making, and I'm gonna zoom out because I'm working with two strips of fabric here. Make this a little darker, not quite as bright because this fabric is like super bright. Okay, so I have here, let me grab my, um, this is a little demo I wanted to throw together for y'all. This is my 10 inch slicer ruler. Now this ruler I designed, can y'all believe, almost 10 years ago almost 10 years ago, we started manufacturing this ruler. It's made here in the US. I, I only have a couple companies that maybe still have this wholesale. Um, the only other place to get it is from us, so we do still have these in our online shop. I have a full video library of different ways that you can use my 10-inch slicer to create different projects, different quilt blocks, and so I had started to whip up a couple of different like table runners and table toppers recently, and just using like a big tumbler block. And so I've been using my 10 inch slicer to do that and I thought I would share with y'all how to do it here. Okay, let me grab some water. Remember, I call bingo on Wednesdays. And today we had a trip. We had almost 15 people in there, so <clears throat> my throat is a little off. And guess what? After I get off of this live show, I have to get ready to go because spring volleyball season is in session and I'm coaching my daughter's 12 and under team. And I'm gonna be hollering at 13, 12, 10, 11, and 12 year old girls next. So. 
<clears throat> we'll see if I still have a voice tomorrow. Okay, now we are going to use my 10 inch slicer and just two strips of 10 inch wide fabric by the width of the fabric, like 10 inch wide strip cut by the width of the fabric. So width of the fabric, you know, we talk, when we say width of the fabric, we're saying from selvage to selvage. So this is the same way the fabric comes off the bolt. If you were in a quilt shop and you told them, let me get a third of a yard or a half of a yard, they measure this way. So I just measured 10 inches. From here to here is 10 inches and it's folded. And the same thing for the other strip. So if you have scraps, and I know we probably all have bins full of unfinished projects, UFOs, whips, if you will. This is a quick one. If you lost your quilting sojo, quilting mojo, and you want to get it back, two 10 inch wide strips and my 10 inch slicer. Here we go. So the first thing I do is I leave it on the fold and on the folded edge here, I position, so I turn my ruler, okay? So that the straight 90 degree angle is that way. So I'm looking at the wrong side now of the ruler and I'm aligning the fold of my strip with the edge of my ruler, okay? And now I'm gonna cut, let me, this camera's in my way, but I just wanna look over here and make sure that it is aligned. It is, I can kind of feel with my hand right on the fold there. And so because the 10 inch slicer is 10 inches tall, you can see that it matches the height of the strip because it's 10 inches a wide as well. And then I'm just gonna cut along the side here. So of course, because this is on the fold, we're gonna open it up and we have a big tumbler block, okay? So now, that's one, okay? From here, I'm gonna separate these. Oh, you know what? Let me cut off the selvage first. Duh. Let me match these up. So don't do like me. I'll show you on the other one. First, cut off your selvage. And this part, the, the selvage cutting part may vary based on the manufacturer. Like if you're using one fabric from one collection and one from another, or if you're using two different fabrics from different manufacturers, you know that the width of the fabric can vary. So just be careful with that, uh, that you're not using one that's like 44 inches and one that's 42 without trimming them up to size. I should have probably done this before, but no big deal. And I'll show you why it's no big deal because the way that I'm gonna position these blocks to create the little runner, there are no points to match. So whatever's left over on the ends, you can trim it up if you want to. All right, so now I'm gonna separate these out. And then I just fold this over so that the bottom edge here is at two and a half inches. And again, this doesn't have to be super, super perfect. It's a great little project for you to kind of get back into the groove. And now I'm going to match it up. Now still the pretty side of the project, or excuse me, of the ruler. And then again, I'm lining up that side, that 90 degree angle is going this way and another 90 degree here. And I need to pull this a little bit more because it should be what I'm looking at the top here should be exactly the shape of my template. I should have had this on my magnetic cutting board though because the fabric doesn't move quite as much as what I have under, you know, the, the surface I have on my table right here. Let's see if I can get it to stay steady. All right, that's better. So right here, once the top matches, it's still folded again, I'm going to trim here. <clears throat> okay. Now I have another one. This one, I leave it just like this. If you're familiar with making tumbler block quilts, you know that when you get to the end, usually you have a full tumbler and to make it square down the sides, whether you're making something that's you know like a square quilt or a rectangular quilt, you usually have to cut it, right? So we use the straight edge already so we don't have to cut anything else. So let's see. Oh, Maggie, of nine, Maggie F99 says, I have that slicer and have forgotten about it. Good, so I'm bringing it back so that y'all can <laughs> take it out from the drawer that you got it in and use it. Okay, let me put it back. And it's a great way to just, and if you don't have pre-cuts, that's why I started using this one with a 10 inch um, strip, like that, easy peasy. And if you trim a little bit off the top, it's no big deal. Again, it's just the general shape, okay? Like that. And so now I have two like this, okay? So I'm gonna set these aside real quick and let's cut the other strip, and then I'm just gonna position them here how they are, and I already have a couple that have been sewn together so you can get a feel for exactly how it's gonna look. 
I'm going to trim the selvage off. And because my ruler has this 90 degree angle um, side here, two 90 degree angles on the one straight side, I also use it to trim up blocks or to do stuff like this, like trim off the selvage edge. Okay. So I have my fold. I'm going to turn this. And I'm cutting it the exact same way with the second strip. There's one. You could cut through multiple layers too, depending on what block you're using. If you check out, um, so when you order the ruler from us, for those of you that don't have it, it comes shrink wrapped in plastic and there's a label on it. On that label is the link where you can go on my website to find the full video library uh, that we have archived all the tutorials that I myself or other bloggers have done. I have other YouTubers that have used my ruler to create uh, tutorials in different quilt blocks. I have other bloggers that have used it and um, made other projects with it, you know, and so I just put them all there. That way you can kind of scroll through, grab your ruler, pick out the project you want to make, and that way you can go in and, you know, then select your fabric and um, and get right to using it with whatever the instructional is that's there whether it's a blog post or a video tutorial that I've done. But I mean, this is like minutes, minutes to throw this together and everybody has two 10 inch wide strips. Come on, I know y'all do. And sometimes when we look at little chunks of yard, I mean, it's yardage, but not a lot, you know? We look at it like, what am I gonna do with this? So if you get two, and you know I like contrast, I like to get one dark fabric and one that plays as the light. They're not necessarily dark and light in themselves, but when they're next to each other, I like to have one fabric play as the light and one to play as the dark. Okay, so now let's start alternating. And I'm going to see if this camera angle will allow me to show all of them because, I mean, it's not a huge runner, but you could obviously turn this into an actual quilt and do more rows or add on before you put the little end caps on the rows themselves, okay? Where are my other ones? This guy here. So now you can see, I think you can see that. They're there. And then we'll come in here with the other tumbler, the opposite color. And instead of having it like this, obviously, right, we're going to turn it like this, and then the other one is gonna go like this, okay? And then you can throw the other end cap on the end. And now it just becomes a matter of like playing around with these things to see what you wanna do, how you wanna have it. So whereas on this top row, I have that turquoise fabric as my two end caps, I still have like two, end, and I keep calling them end caps, I don't even know that's what you call them, but you know what I mean. I'm gonna use the two end caps <laughs> of the other print for the second row. And that way you see that everything is going to alternate. If I have a wide bottom here, I'm gonna flip the other one. Look how cute that looks. It's so basic and simple, y'all. But like I said, this is a great way to get you back into your quilting groove and you have a little runner just like that. Super simple, grab two fabrics. If you don't have two fabrics, Grab even less, like say you don't have a full width of a strip. If you have less, just chop them up if you can, you know, folding them like that. If you have, you'll need a piece at least that wide. Um, and then you can make it fully scrappy. But it's such an easy way to whip this, something like this up because it's a tumbler block. We all know that they alternate one up, one down, and they're huge. <laughs> this is not like a six inch tumbler block, okay? So that's all you have to do. Then you would sew these guys together using your quarter of an inch seam, which of course I'm gonna do. I'll have that done for y'all next week so you can check it out. And then I'm gonna show you what it would look like. There's different ways that you can position the tumblers depending on, like for example, where the floral is, this floral touches another floral here and then it touches the other floral here. And so that kind of connects, giving your eye a place to go because these guys are touching and matching here. Whereas, in these two samples, I basically made two. I mean, these literally take me like 10 minutes. It's a joke how easy it is. So see how the red on here, and it's upside down. Let's get these antlers with ornaments going up. Um, the red is touching just like those florals were on the last sample that I showed you. But with the exact same two 10-inch strips, I made this one where you can alternate them. And instead of having the red touching, I put them the longer bases this way, 
And so you get that full, true, alternating one up, one down. And so none of them are kind of overlapping. The main difference here, y'all, is going to be there are no points to match when you line them up like this. Okay? Do you see what this is? This is basically the width of this red one has the smaller end of the green one going to it. And that's what makes it overlap by here and here. But there are no points to match. So if you know that you're not great at point intersections, or maybe you're just, you know, still practicing your cutting and you're sewing consistently, then you want to stay away from something like this that's going to require you to match up these points. At least that's the idea, right? That's the goal, to get to matching these points so that you have them intersect and swap over to the other fabric at every one of those changing points, okay? But this is two different orientations for the blocks with the exact same just two 10 inch wide strips by the width of fabric. So imagine this, all, both of these, right? All four of these rows together. I mean, this could be a little baby quilt, really put together. If I wanted to, if I would have done them the same, it would have looked better, you know, cause there's too much going on. Like those two rows are, are connected a different way than these, but two 10 inch strips would give you like a little cute square mat, basically like a little quilt that you can put down and put a little baby on to play in the ground or a picnic quilt or something like that, simple and small. If you keep making them and adding more blocks to it, obviously you can make however big of a quilt um, that you want. So I just wanted to share that idea with y'all to see, you know, if some of you are, plan are wanting to get back into quilting or you're just learning, um, something like this is so quick and easy to get you started. Now, if you're planning to make this into like a table topper or a runner, for me, I kind of like this size and, and, and I'll go over the measurement. It's, it ends up being, it depends on the width of the fabric of the strips that you began with, right? Because if you're using one strip from a different manufacturer that had a thicker selvage and you had to trim it down further, your uh, runner here might end up being 39 inches or 40 inches, maybe 38, depending on the manufacturer and the fabrics that you use. But that's a pretty good size to put out like on my breakfast bar like that and put trays or drinks and plates and napkins for a party to just have a little bit of a pop of color or print that has to do with the party theme, I think is amazing. And I started doing that, not with the same design, but with my other, um, with some different Halloween fabrics in the past couple of years, we always do a Halloween party for the kids to invite some friends over and having just the black, the orange, the spiders, the skulls and stuff underneath the food, it just takes the decor up definitely a notch. All right. So these obviously I'll be using around the holiday times, Christmas time. These were fabrics from a bundle that we sold last year. We sold out super quick and these were all um, art gallery fabrics, but I had this left over. So I turned them into that. And then if you're going to be making a to table topper or a table runner like these guys, a quick and easy way to get it done and quilted is to actually use something like this Bozal light fusible batting. So I use this stuff a lot for those of you that have joined my bag clubs and have taken uh, some of my online digital uh, sewing courses for making handbags, wallets, pouches, and things like that. Y'all know I love this stuff. It's light. It's like a thin fusible fleece. It is polyester based. And on one side, it's scratchy because it has dots of adhesive. This stuff is literally the perfect weight for table runners, table, table toppers, and home decor. Now, we do have this in stock right now. I put the link in the description box below. I think we have around 20 or 25 packs or something like that in stock. So if you're watching this live and you need one, you can head over and grab one before we sell out. And the other thing I was gonna say is that the package comes with a piece that measures 45 inches. So you know that the length of the runner, if you're using the technique that I showed you here with the width of the fabric, 45 is going to be bigger than the width of the strips. So you know you'll have a lot going, you know, plenty to go that way. And then it comes by 36 inches wide, so it's one yard. So if you made your runners 18 inches tall, you could get two out of one package of this, of this stuff, okay? And then, yep, and then don't forget the slicer. We definitely have that in stock too if you want the slicer so that you can make this and so many other blocks. But this is an easy way to make a large tumbler. So the, uh, Rebecca's asking, what is it called? If you're asking about this, this is called Bozal Light Fusible Batting. Do you want to put it up on the screen for them just so they can visually see the package and the dimensions and stuff like that? So we're going to put that up on the screen for you so y'all can see. Um, we've sold it, a, I mean, tons of it over the last several years. Uh, we used to put it in like bag kits and things like that. I use it a lot for handbags because it gives like weight to your project, 
but it's not like a super thick fusible fleece or like a really, really dense one. You know, it's not quite as bad um, in terms of like the rigidity. For this in here, for a table topper, a table runner, it makes it so easy because you can pop it in the wash and in the dryer. Easy peasy. I would, once it comes out the dryer, just give it a press with an iron and then um, that will just smooth out, you know, smooth everything out and then you'll be good to go. But it fuses pretty easily. It does need uh, some type of moisture to fuse. So we put uh, like steam or spritz your fabric with a little bit of a spray bottle with water and then you can hit it with the heat of a dry iron to help it adhere, obviously, to the wrong side of your project, okay? So you would open it like this and I just cut off a 20... Um, it's like a 21 inch piece or so that I cut, but you could fuse it to this. Now I know some of you are probably wondering, could I just fuse it and not quilt it? You probably could when it comes out of the iron, again, hit it with steam or with an iron just to kind of re-adhere that adhesive in case it came off in any spots. I would still give it some stitching though, just to make sure that nothing else moves on you, especially if you um, pre-shrunk pre your fabric. Uh, then you should be, you know, pretty set. But you could go in, you could play around with some free motion quilting designs. You could do some straight line stitching. You could echo and just do some in the ditch stitching around the tumbler shapes. You could kind of follow along here, right? And do an echoing design that crosses over into the other things. Something in this small of a size would make it a lot more manageable and easier for a beginner or someone who doesn't have a long arm or doesn't have years of experience doing free motion quilting to still be able to quilt the layers through. Okay, so just for some of you maybe beginners out there, you would put this on top. This is the scratchy side with the adhesive. You'd fuse this down into place. I would trim around it put another layer of fabric behind as the backing fabric, and then I would bind it just like a regular quilt, attaching a separate uh, strip of fabric around to bind the edges. But you can see that even with this one layer of fabric and the light fusible batting, when you fold it, and of course it's still missing one layer of fabric, but you can see that it just folds really, really easily. It would be super small. You could like roll this up and just put it in your decor bin for you know next year's holiday season, whatever it is that you made. And that way you don't have to use up your more expensive quilt batting. If you also make quilts, you usually have that stuff in, in big batches. For home decor projects, this light fusible batting works super, super great. All right. Um, let's see. Oh, Carol says she got that bundle, this bundle of fabric and we sold it over the holidays. Awesome. Um, Janice says I would love it full, fully scrappy. Totally. She says it would make for a great table conversation such as this was a skirt. This was a purse. This was a tote, right? Like of all the different chunks that you cut up and put into it. That would be awesome. Um, yeah. So if you're enjoying this video or, or maybe if you liked my roaches, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Uh, we definitely would appreciate it. And again, all the links to anything that I'm talking about in this video is in uh, the description box below. We put it in the Facebook description as well. Okay. So that's that. I just kind of wanted to show y'all that little demo. And the last part of this demo that I want to do is to show you how I would position the pieces. Obviously I don't have time today to sew up uh, this runner that we cut up, but I showed y'all how to cut it and I want to show you how to sew it. So this way, this way. Okay. Because this is not uh, a straight line that we're going to be, or I mean like a vertical line that we're going to be sewing. Anytime you have any type of triangular, like angular cut here, when you go to sew these together, pretty sides touching like this, you don't really want to match it up point to point because you'll end up having to trim a little bit off the bottom in this case, because then it'll like offset it by a little bit. And if you don't want to waste any fabric at all, meaning you don't want to really be trimming stuff away from it once it's done and you want to preserve the full height of your runner here, then I would recommend that you offset by a quarter of an inch. And that offset is gonna be by whatever your seam allowance is. So if we're gonna be sewing a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to, with this top fabric piece, come down, my pointer tool, I'm coming down from this tip of the bottom fabric, a quarter of an inch, and then I place the top fabric there. Let me just zoom it in, because I want people to see Okay, do you see this little bit of the fabric that's sticking out? That's a quarter of an inch, okay? So what happens is 
that when I slide, 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 and I'm going to put a couple pins here because I don't want this to move. You got to be careful because although this is not cut on a true bias, it's still cut on an angle. So you can easily distort and um, pull and push on this edge here. And then your fabric pieces are not going to end up being the, the length that they were supposed to be. Okay. You don't want to be yanking on this here. So I'm just putting a couple of these pins and I forget that I have my wool mat underneath. So the pins keep going into the wool mat. Okay. Like that. And so what happens because this top turquoise fabric got pushed down by a quarter of an inch, it's now sticking out on this end by a quarter of an inch. And it looks like a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to bring this up till it's more closer to a quarter of an inch up top. There we go. And try not to pull on this because if I tug right there on this angle of any of these cuts that I made, you're going to distort your fabric. Okay. So avoid that. Let me make sure. Yeah, that'll be close enough. Okay. And let me put one more pin. Okay. And so that's what you would do with all the others. If these two were going together, same thing, offset them by that quarter of an inch and stitch it down. So what happens is at that angle, once we sew and we push it back, it ends up matching up a lot closer than if I match them point to point because of the difference in that seam allowance, that quarter of an inch effects. Okay. All right. Charlotte's asking if we still carry the Bozal double-sided fusible fleece, which is the duet fuse too. Um, we do still carry it. I'm not sure if we have any in stock or if it's sold out. Um, if it's sold out, just send us a message or you can add your email address to the wait list on our website. Any of the physical products that we sell, uh, when it shows the sold out, there's a little box that you can enter your um, email address in. And then that way, when we add it back into inventory, you will automatically get an email from our system saying, Hey, this product has been, is back in stock now. All right. So I'm going to start here. Let's set my machine up for my quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I'm going to shorten the stitch length to two millimeters. Oh, I was like, what's going so slow. My thing was on turtle speed. Y'all know I don't sew on turtle speed. I need fast, fast, fast. So I'm stitching all the way down. Pull those pins as you get to them. My fabric has moved on me a little. Let's readjust, but not pulling. If I pull on that edge, I'm going to stretch it out. And I don't backstitch. I just go edge to edge because at the top and at the bottom is going to get sewn either to another row. So I'm going to have a line of stitching that's going to cut across perpendicular uh, to this seam or the binding is going to do it. Okay. I have my iron here. <laughs> it's been heating up, but it's just been sitting there. So I'm trying to get it from spitting. Oh my goodness. Y'all, we're going to use my, my new clapper together. This is my first time using it. I just got it yesterday. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Come on. The length of it covers the entire seam. That's what I'm talking about. That's why I wanted a long one. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Looks good. Looks good. It matches up top here. I don't know why I'm so off. I must have stretched out my, my fabric after I told y'all like seven times not to yourselves. <laughs> Or my row could have also been a little bit bigger than the 10 inches, but no big deal. And so we hit the clapper here again. Oh, I can just feel it like the weight of this on here. Look at that. So flat. I love that it spans the full length of that seam. This, this, this is great. All right, so I am going to have to trim this one down a little bit. I wonder if it's not exactly 10 inches tall. But anyway, y'all get the idea. Like this, like this. Offset your blocks a little by that seam allowance. Like this. And the next one gets stitched on there. So you don't even have that many seams to sew, y'all. 
and this project will be whipped up in no time. If you did like a fusible fleece or a light fusible batting like I did here, I mean, even say you had to crank out a quick project, if you didn't have time to quilt it and bind it and do all of that, you could even do like a stitch and turn, right? Fuse the top of the runner to the light fusible batting. Then I would position the same measurement of backing fabric on top pretty side face down on top of the pretty side of the actual runner. Stitch all the way around, leave an opening, flip it right side out, press it, top stitch. In less than an hour, you'll have a, a gift for whatever party or whoever's birthday you forgot, okay? And you can whip something up super, super fast with fabrics that the gift recipient would like or whatever the theme is, you get the idea. But this is just a super quick and easy way to throw together some tumbler blocks that are big, big, big. Oh, hi, Nancy, you must be tuning in late. Nope, didn't get my clapper back from TSA, but Chris at um, Modern American Vintage went ahead and sent me one to replace it. It's almost identical to the one I had. Same uh, inlay panel here with the wood, gorgeous. So yes, shout out to Chris. Check out his tumblers, y'all. I'm gonna stitch one more just because I want y'all to see quick, easy. You just put a couple pins or don't pin if you don't want to. The seams aren't even that long. It's just a super quick and easy project. And like I said, if you position the blocks so that you have no intersections, they don't even really have to be the, the same size, you know? It'll just be the same general idea of a tumbler block. You won't have to match up anything. Put it how you want it and trim up wherever you see a little bit of it being off on the ends. Nobody will ever, ever know. Okay, let's press this guy. Ah, my pretty clapper. <laughs> I'm obsessed. Ah, if you don't sew, you don't get it. It's just, the guy was like, this is a hefty chunk of wood. I'm like, dude, I know you see the price on that thing. This is not just a chunk of wood. This is a tool for artistic perfection. Come on. Ah, beautiful. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Now, for those of you that like to press seams open, let's play with that real quick just to show you, and then we are going to call it a day, because I think... I showed y'all exactly how to cut your fabrics. I showed you how to um, cut, use the 10 inch slicer to cut the tumbler blocks out of just two 10 inch strips, how to piece them together, a couple tips there. Since we're, you know, obsessed with this clapper, let's go ahead and press the seam open and see what we get. Especially since it spans the full length. Ooh, I can already tell. It's gonna be crispy. Can y'all, I mean, you can't even see the seam. The only thing that tells you that it's the seam that's open is because obviously this is the wrong side of the fabric and the brighter turquoise is the pretty side of the fabric and the same thing for the black background of this fabric. Look at that. Whew, cute. Uh, Cherie says you don't see the free embroidery file below. Uh, if you just go to craftygemini.com, just, or go to Google and type in Crafty Gemini bunny bookmark. That's it and you'll find it right there. I also, if you go on my Facebook page, uh, a post that I posted yesterday, so just scroll a few posts down, um, it's right there for you. And I have all the link and all the information and everything for you to get it if we don't have it listed right there for you. Oh my goodness, this just feels so good. Yes, Clapper Perfection, we're back in business. Now I have two of them and I love them. All right. <laughs> Zena says, Vanessa, I told you the TSA guy's wife is using your clapper, probably watching you and using her new clapper right now. Can you imagine? <laughs> that would be the funniest thing. Like if I get a picture like, hey, is this yours? Recognize this? No. Uh-uh. <laughs> uh, now I just laugh. I'm not that mad anymore since I got a replacement from Chris. So he sent me this one. So thank you. All right. So thank you, everybody. Yes, Genesis, so good for every holiday. I might even try to make some. You should. Super easy. For those of you that have had my ruler for going on nine, ten years now, um, take it out. Dust it off. 
and try your hand at some of these big tumbler blocks and make some runners. If you do post pictures, definitely tag me at Crafty Gemini. You can post on Facebook and on Instagram. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in for another episode of Whip Wednesday. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your week. Post pictures, and hopefully you find some time to make something for you this weekend. And I will see y'all next week in the next video. All right, take care, everybody. Bye.